everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. April 4th was the start of the Home Again Quilt Along sponsored by The Fat Quarter Shop. This is a lovely two color quilt. I will put links to this below if you are interested in making it. This is a pretty big quilt. It finishes at 74 by 94. I have already cut out all of my fabric and I've got them on a project board and I have got alpha bitties on them so that they are labeled according to the pattern and an alphabetical order. They have many, many different, well, nine different colorways. I chose the orange colorway. This is really a pretty straightforward quilt as far as it does not have a lot of diagonal seams except for the flying geese in the blocks. So I wanted to show you how to make the flying geese according to the pattern. When you get up close, the center is a nine patch. It, uh, it ha it's two of the darker, and so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it's surrounded by flying geese blocks. And I have started my flying geese blocks. So I'm gonna do these all first, and then I'll have everything on the project board. And what I like to do with these kinds of quilts where there's really, it's very repetitive and it's the same thing over and over. I find that very soothing. I enjoy those kinds of quilts. I get up in the morning about 5.30 or 6 with a cup of coffee and I will come in here to my sewing room and just sit down, set my timer on my watch for 20 minutes and just start stitching. But for blocks like the flying geese, I like to get all those done ahead of time so all the heavy lifting is done and I don't have to think about it early in the morning during my quiet sewing time. So I thought I would take you through my process to get those flying geese done. This method is called the four at a time, no waste method. There's little to no trimming that goes on in these blocks. I do something, it's just a little trick, kind of on my mind, but it helps me to make sure that the blocks all fit, that the geese all, everything. Your geese should finish at three and a half by six and a half. If you use a very fine line marking tool, to do this, you might find that your blocks come out a little bit short. So what I use is a regular point friction marker. This will go away with the iron. And I make the line just a little bit wider. And then I kind of trick my brain to just sew to the inside in the seam allowance side of that line, that thicker line. And it always seems that when everything folds over, everything fits and my blocks come out to be three and a half by six and a half. So let me just take you through and show you how I'm going to do that. I have a special ruler that I use for this. The pattern calls for you to draw a quarter inch line away from center diagonally on the back of square E. Okay, and if you didn't have one of these quarter inch ruler markers, I love this thing. I don't use it all the time, but I love that when I need it, I have it. So this one is by Creative Grids. I will link to it below. It's at the Fat Quarter Shop. What you can do is just take a regular ruler and you would put the quarter inch mark exactly corner to corner on the ruler and then draw a line beside it. Again, I do not recommend using a thin pencil or a fine line marker. Um, it just is easier on your eyes if you use something just a little bit wider. So the beauty of this right here is it has a line that goes through it, plus you can see there are some gaps. So it, it's really a great little marker. And this one is large enough to go corner to corner on this square. So let's do that. All right. So this is square E according to the pattern. I will link to the pattern and the fabrics and everything below. And I'm going to take my marker. If you have a rotary mat, that can be very handy. And let's see. These creative grids have little grippies on the back of them. Just Kind of, they feel like little sandy spots and they work so good. So turn this 
and I'm not supposed to move the ruler. <laughs> the idea is not to move the ruler. It, if you don't have a rotary mat, you can do what I'm doing and just use another mat. And then you can move that mat on top of the other one. That makes life very handy. So I can see the point of the corner through the gaps. And I'm just going to use this and turn it. Make sure I'm corner to corner on each one. Again, this is called the four at a time, no waste method. All right. So you can see here now, you can see that nice and big. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut it into fourths, top, bottom, side to side. So I'm measuring up here on the X's where they meet. I'm going to put my ruler right on the edge of that. And now I'm making sure that the line on the ruler is straight with the edge of the fabric on the top of the bottom. So I know that I am centered on that. Okay, I'm going to rotate it. Try not to move them. And then do the same thing here. I'm putting them on center and then I'm measuring and making sure that the lines on the ruler are even with the edges of the fabric. Okay, so we did not cut on the marked lines. We cut top, bottom, side to side, just like that. All right, now we are going to take fabric square A. That's fabric square A, that's what that is. This orange one I just cut was fabric square E. Put that back so I remember what's what. And what you need to do is you want to place this face right sides together exactly on the corner, just like this. And you wanna make sure you're not overlapping at all. I'm gonna put a pin with the weave. I'm not doing it diagonally. I'm putting the pin either horizontally or vertically, one way or the other, so that this fabric does not shift and it doesn't get torqued at all on the bias. We don't want that. When you're messing around with flying geese, you, you need to pin straight. It's my recommendation. I'm putting these on opposite corners to each other and making sure everything meets up top, bottom, side to side. Now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew just to the inside in here of this thick line, just to the inside. That's actually going to give me, we, I've talked about it in another video, what is called turn of cloth for this to flop over. And it might look real confusing right now. This does not look like fine geese at all. And when it's all said and done, these two don't have anything to do with each other. So right now, we still have these other two. Right now, I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and stitch down this side and come back and stitch down this side, okay? And then I'm gonna cut it in half. Okay, I'm gonna put this, start it just to the inside of that of that drawn line. So I'm not stitching on the line. I'm stitching right beside it. Now I'm gonna cut my thread. Some people like to just give it some slack and swing it around and not cut the threads. I don't care for that. It will pull the fabric and torque it. And doing the same thing here, just to the inside of that big line right beside it. Okay, that looks good. All right, now I'm going to cut this apart right down the center and then I'll meet you at the ironing board. So what I'm gonna do now is these, one of them is on top of the other. So the one that's on the top, I'm gonna press it over with my fingers and for, I like to press with my nail from the center out and give it a finger press, okay? And then I'm gonna press the other one and press it from the center out and then go the other side. And that get, just gives it the idea of where I want it to be. And then I will place my iron on it. 
make sure it doesn't have any creases or anything and I like to use a clapper. I'm not using any steam. Steam will torque the fibers in these woven quilting cottons and that's not a good idea. Okay, so there's that one. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to press this over. And use my clapper. And that clapper, look how flat everything stays. It's wonderful. This is a Sapporo Gravity Fed Iron. I like this iron because it never spits on my fabric. Okay, so let's go back over to the table and I'll show you how to pin on the next ones. I know it doesn't look like flying geese yet, but just wait. So now, on this open white side over here, I'm gonna take this other one and I'm gonna put it right up to the edges on the top and the side and I'm going to pin them not on the diagonal. Okay, and same for the other one. Okay, now I'm going to take this back over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew just to the inside of that drawn okay. line. Okay. So I've sewn to the inside, right on the inside edge of that drawn line. I'm going to remove my pins and cut these apart down the center. So now what I'm going to do is just fold this over again from the center, finger crease it out, do this for all of them and then I'm going to take it to the ironing board and press it and then put the clapper on it. Again, I do not use steam. Steam is used when you want to bend fabrics to your will and I want these fabrics to maintain their shape and not get all wonky on me. So I'm going to go press and use the clapper and I'll be right back. One of the things I recommend you do, if you have got a pressing surface that has straight lines on it, I've got wording on my pressing surface over at my ironing station. When I press flying geese points, these are on the bias and so they can go all kinds of wonky and what I will do is I'll put a point on a line and another and make sure that this is straight on a line and then I'll press it so that it's not pulling up this way or pulling down that way and then when I put a clapper on it and pull it up, it is straight and all of them came out perfectly straight like that. And the goal is to make it so that this is exactly three and a half by six and a half, not three and an eighth <laughs> or something shorter than that. So I'm going to use my Quilter Select ruler here and show you and just going to hold, I'm going to put it exactly on top. So I want you to see, I'm going to hold this up, if I can do it without it slipping. It's exactly three and a half by six and a half. It fits perfectly. Top, bottom, side to side. It's perfect. So I hope that was helpful. It's just a little trick I learned to just stitch to the inside of a wide line instead of exactly on a thin line. You are going to give yourself room for that fabric to turn over. It's called turn of cloth in the garment sewing world and it applies in every single flying geese unit you will ever make. This is the four at a time no waste method. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe and we will talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.